The following content has been provided by RWTH Aachen University. Mappings. Uh, mappings are a major thing. The Swedish hairdryer already hinted at it. Mappings are a major thing that we put at an, into an interface at a very, very basic level. You'll see that in this class we're going from understanding how people really interact with technology, with information, even with you know, a pen on a very, very basic level. Uh, and then we'll go up and sort of move to, OK, and how do we create a process to create interfaces that work for people? But mappings are a very you know, basic um, perceptual concept. We all know mappings from mathematics, right? So mapping is you know, what a function does. It maps something from one domain to another domain. Um, and uh, it's basically in mathematics the relation between two elements from, from, from different sets. Uh, so for us as interface designers, um, it's something very related. It's essentially the relation between, if you take an input control, some kind of you know, button slide or whatever, uh, it's the relation between what I get to do physically with the input control, move it up and down or sideways or whatever, and what the effect of operating that control is in the application you know, or in the real world if, it, if I'm controlling a real world process. So you, know, you, you turn your steering wheel in one way and the car turns right. That, that would be a mapping between the turning direction of the steering wheel and the way that the car turns. Um, and here are some examples. Uh, this, this light switch here, for example, uh, takes an input, you know, it's either in the bottom or top position, flick down or up, and that maps to whether a light is on or off. Um, but a little bit more complicated, you know, this joystick will have all kinds of physical directions that I can move it and all kinds of buttons that I can press in and out, um, and that will again lead to some effects in the application in the game that I'm, I'm playing. But it also works in the input direction, and that might be a little less obvious, uh, but again, if you take a, for example, uh, a thermometer, a thermometer takes a real world measurement, you know, temperature, and maps that to a way of displaying that. So for example, you know, the thermometer, this, in a classic one, this, this, this thing goes up um, as, you know, as the temperature increases. Or this one here, you know, a simple two channel volume meter um, would display the left volume here and the right volume here, and as, as the volume on each channel goes up, the, this bar moves over to the right, and it also might you know, enter different color zones. Now, why are these uh, things interesting? Um, because what happens when we explore an interface, a system, a, an object, really anything we need to interact with, uh, we develop conceptual models, we know that already, and uh, we develop these conceptual models in order to remember the mapping. So that means you interact with something, you do something, it, it has an effect, and then you start building a model to remember, okay, so when I do this to this control, that's what's gonna happen. Um, and here's a great example of a mapping that seems odd if you think about it, but it actually kind of makes sense in the end. Um, I talked earlier about the steering wheel, right? So let's first look at the, the indicators here. Now, the indicators in a car, blinker, right, um, are controlled by flicking that switch up and down, right? Is that a natural mapping to the left and the right indicator light going off? What is the conceptual model that you create in your head? Yes. How do you remember that? So, yes and, uh, okay, yes, why? Because you move the steering wheel in that direction, right? So as you make a right turn, uh, you turn the steering wheel in that direction, and you basically just have to hold your finger out, and the, you know, the indicator switch will flip up or down as you turn the wheel. So it's in that direction, it's easy, yes. Good point, you have to do your indication first and then do the steering wheel movement. However, 
the fact that the mapping works isn't affected by that because you know in your head, whenever I want to turn right, I need to turn that wheel in that direction. So when I know that whenever I need to turn right, I'll turn around, you know, this hand goes up. So I know this hand goes up, so flicking the switch up then becomes a natural mapping, even though it doesn't happen you're right physically at the same time, maybe. Um, unless you're a bad driver, I guess. <laughs> um, now, a little more tricky. So that's right, that's why the, the indicator light works, but what about the steering wheel itself? Does anybody remember, for you guys it's not quite as far away as for me, uh, when you took your traverse driving lessons, maybe like the first time ever you sat down in a car, let's assume you haven't played, you know, I don't know, uh, car simulation games before on your Xbox. Um, very first time you sit down, you're in front of the steering wheel, and which way do you turn to go right or left? That's actually, if you haven't ever seen this before, not entirely obvious. Is there a way to explain why the mapping, I know this is strange to think about because by now everybody knows how to turn, right? But is there a way to explain why the mapping of the steering wheel to going right or left is natural? Why it would maybe be weird if it was the other way around? Yeah. Well, if you look at the car from the top, that's exactly the way it turns. So if you turn the steering wheel that way and you look at the top from the top on the car, it also turns that way. Huh, interesting. That's an interesting perspective. I've never thought about it that way. Uh, but it makes sense. Yeah, you kind of have to have sort of an out-of-body experience looking down at yourself from the <laughs> above the car, and then you're like, yeah, okay. But, but yeah, yeah, I, I guess I could buy that. There, there's something else that is a little more physical and related to how you handle the steering wheel. Again, if you are a proper driver. Yeah? Uh, your hands are on the upper side of the steering wheel and not on the downside, so when you turn right, you move your hands right, and when you turn left, you turn your hands left. Exactly. Because you are uh, holding it on your side. Right, right. So forget Grand Theft Auto for a moment, right? So uh, you're actually properly driving, you know, with your hands up at the top of the wheel, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, right? Remember that? Uh, and if you do that, then you are actually moving your hands towards the right if you want to make a right turn, right? So, um, and that is where it becomes a natural mapping. Okay. Um, and uh, the, uh, another example is, uh, that is very related is if you take a motorcycle, I think Norman has this example in his book, um, there's a motorcycle switch on the right handlebar to uh, turn on the indicator. How would that indicator switch have to move to be sort of natural? There's two, two options really. Yeah? What do you think? Uh, move it up to indicate uh, a left turn. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to go left, so my right hand goes kind of forward. So in that direction, if I had a switch that would also move in that direction, that's actually how a lot of these indicator switches work. You flick the switch forward or upwards or something in that direction. Um, and that is then also basically a movement that your arm is doing anyway, your hand is doing anyway, because you're making a left turn. Um, and uh, Norman has this little story in his book who says like, uh, you know, a friend was saying, I could never remember how that thing was mapped until somebody explained to me that this is, this is the conceptual mapping, you know, this is the mapping that I should be thinking about, the conceptual model I should be thinking about. And ever since they explained that to me, there was no way of forgetting it again. Right? Very easy to remember. This will lead to something very important um, on how much we can remember based on, you know, whether it's logically explained or whether it's just random unconnected facts. So, um, mappings are basically how an, a control influences the real world or how a real world value is represented in a display. They can be good or bad in the sense that they can be natural, um, reflecting a mapping that makes immediate sense to me, or they can be sort of artificial, random, arbitrary, in which case I always have to remember them again. Um, and there are different ways of making mappings natural. The easiest one we've already talked about here at length, which is, yes, go ahead. Uh, I have a question yeah. regarding what you just said. Uh, it's the pedals in a car. Yes. I wouldn't say this is natural, but I don't think you have to uh, think hard about it either. 
So if you learned it one time, you, uh, yeah, you remember. You remember. Thinking. Pedals in a car are a good example. Uh, yeah, I don't think there, I mean, the, 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 the gas pedal maybe, you know, the accelerator pedal, uh, where, you know, the more you step on it, the more you move it forward, the faster you go forward. So you could say there is a mapping between the forward position of that thing and that's sort of the, and the, its first derivative, which is the speed at which you're moving forward. So that kind of maybe works. Um, with the brakes, much harder. Yeah, it doesn't really make obvious sense. I think what most of us are creating in our heads is probably a model of, as I push down these brakes, I'm pushing some kind of, you know, brake onto a wheel, and that sort of stops it. And the harder I push, the 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 stronger the the braking gets. So I guess the mapping inside the pedals themselves kind of makes sense. Um, but you know, that gas is on the right, and and you know, your clutch is on the left. Yeah, that's really hard to remember. Um, there's not really much you can say about like that being a natural mapping or anything. And if anybody ever driven a uh, uh, an automatic, yeah, okay, and you know both like stick shift and automatic go drives you crazy. It's wonderful to observe how uh, our brain gets messed up with these things. I remember when I drove my first automatic in the U.S., um, I was perfectly fine while I was like you know tuttering out of the uh, parking lot from the rental car company because my brain was like on hyperspeed and like making sure that I don't make a mistake like okay this is don't use your left foot don't use like and and then once you relax and you start driving down the, the highway and you want to basically just uh, I don't know like turn off to an exit uh, what do you typically do well you jam on your clutch and you switch down to you know from fifth to fourth gear so what you do instead is you jam on the brake and everybody in the car goes like this um, and that's where you notice oh okay you know my brain hasn't really processed this yet there's still an automatic um, an, an autopilot at work that is using the old mapping that I had stored in my, my head for years. So don't blame yourself, you know, it's all about the mappings in those cases. Um, so those are spatial analogies, you know, something moves in one direction, the effect is also in the same direction in the world. That's very easy. Um, there are other analogies, perceptual analogies, we'll get into those uh, in, a, in a moment. Um, you know, like for example, grouping related controls together. You know, taking Gestalt laws, for example, to make mappings. Those are also easy to, um, to apply. And then there's finally biological cultural analogies. We'll, we'll get to some examples of those. Um, the big point about these natural mappings is that you remember them without having to think about it. Right? You, you'll, you'll just immediately get them. Um, and if you don't understand them at first, you will understand them and remember them once somebody explains them to you. Like, you know, the the, the, you know, the, the motorbike um, indicator switch. That makes them easy to understand, easy to remember, and that increases the ease of use of a system. Right? So that's why it's very good to use natural mapping. And it's amazing. All you need to go is go to MediaMark, you know, or Saturn or one of those tech markets, and look at all the alarm clocks they're selling. You'll go nuts. It's amazing how designers continuously ignore these basic rules, right? Because it saves, I don't know, 0.1 cents in, in parts to use a two, you know, ident or 10 identical buttons for all the functions on an alarm clock, rather than making them somewhat stand out so that when I'm like half asleep, I can find the right button. This content was provided by RWTH, Aachen University.